what gift you have among those five. You are not better than the other who have the others. Don't ever see yourself better than those who have a gift that you do not have. And also, do not, you know, let me put this out there. I'm, I'm trying to give you some knowledge here. I think Paul said, covet the best gift. I want us to keep this in context and not out of context. You, it's all right, I'm going to endorse what um, Paul says. So if you have to covet the best gift, whichever gift you think is the best gift, covet the gift, but don't covet the man who has the gift. Because I'm going to tell you something about the gift. The gift by itself is just a gift. A gift have to have evidence that it is workable, durable, and functional. Without the evidence, we don't know if this gift works. So I have the gift of healing, and I'm walking around. I have the gift of healing in Jesus' name. I have the gift of healing in Jesus' name. I even put on placard back and front. I have the gift of healing in Jesus' name. I said earlier today, a statement is questionable until proven with evidence that it is truthful. So I'm walking around, oh, Prophet Mike. <laughs> Pastor Mike, a Pastor Mike, Teacher Mike, who else? Oh, Teacher Mike. He used to call me Big Mike too, and on, 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 on my former job, Big Mike. <laughs> so I have all this title. Who show I am any of what I said I am? Where is the evidence? There has to be evidence of who we claim to be. And we have to operate by the power of God, not by imitating and, 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 uh, uh, and, and copy, copycatting those other folks that we share the same title or office with. I encourage you today, as you listen to me, be yourself. Do the work of God the way God authorize you and give you grace to do it. You don't have to be like no other prophet. You don't have to be like no other evangelist. You don't have to be like no other teacher, neither pastor nor apostle. You be you. Don't try to be me because I don't want to be you. I want to do God's will, God's way. And that's the only way we are going to unify the body of Christ. So back to us fivefold ministry workers. It is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. So you must now understand the purpose of your gift. It's not for you to personally benefit. It is for the body of Christ. We are, are have to uh, bring the body of Christ to the perfect man. And it takes time. I was saying earlier today in one of the seminars, in one of this, my lecture, that if, if it takes so long for us to be perfect, what about those who we are trying and who we are obligated to try to bring to perfection? It will take time. And I think the Bible mentioned earlier too uh, that we have to do it with grace, with cheerfulness, and with patience. And here we saw that even through patience, God will reveal His power to us. We can probably see, hey, this man has the sign of an apostle. Look, these great things that he does. This, this prophet, this, this uh, evangelist, there are just certain things that come along with these offices. Praise God, that we will know and realize um, that we have those, those gifts. Let me, um, before I go, since time is against me, have a next, se a next se session to look at. I want to just read this that I wrote just for you. How to recognize your gift. You can recognize your gift based on the leading of the Spirit of the Lord. 
The Lord will lead you into opportunities that facilitate your ability to do the things that you are asked to do, led to do, and are called to do. The things that you find you have a passion for. Those things that you are inclined to do are dawned into doing. Also, whenever you do something that you know that you are being empowered to do, the Lord Jesus Christ is a prime example as mentioned in the book of Luke. This is Luke 4 verses 18, 18 and 19. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. To, uh, yes. So the, the, the key phrase here is that Jesus did the work because he was anointed to do the work. Okay? It's very important that we know that we must be anointed. So but, but when, we, when we see that we have been led by God to do these things, we can recognize that, hey, you know what? I think I have the... Um, I have this particular gift. What you have drawn, drawn into doing, what you have the mindset to do, um, you, you, you have this tendency moving towards. I, I also put one, two, three scriptures to support that, to show you that when we have excellence, when we do things in an excellent way, a very unique, special way, it guides us and it kind of leads us to, yes, I think I can recognize what my gift is, that passion is there. And when I do my function in it, 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 it's exceptionally done. Look at James 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, There was a, no, John, sorry, John 3, verses, verses 1 and 2. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. That means what Jesus was doing, nobody did it before like that. And Nicodemus recognized the only way Jesus could have done those things the way he did it, or be taught, etc. God has to be with him. That's how we are to function in the fivefold ministry. When we do something super, you could say supernaturally outstanding, amazingly because God is in it, we will know this is my calling. I am doing it, but this is beyond me, and this, this God is getting glory out of this, and I'm drawn to this. I'm always drawn to this. Opportunities have been made available to me in this area at all times. Books have been pouring out. People sending me books from all over the place. People are calling me to teach the, in the, to, to do a seminar and teaching. People are calling me to, to do healing and so forth. You don't call, they call. Those things, when you see those things that are coming to you, or you, you, people calling you to do the things, God sending you to do those things, you know these are the things you dream about. These are the things that you are moved with, you are compassionate about. You just cannot get away from them. Daniel 2 verse 5 says, did I, did I, uh, no, no, Daniel 12 verse, I think I wrote this backward, I wonder if it's Daniel um, 5 verse 12, got to be, uh, that, uh, right, he said, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, 5 verse 12, yes, then, for as much as an excellent spirit, and knowledge and understanding, interpretation of dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show, show the interpretation. What kind of spirit? How did he do, demonstrate those things? With excellence. That, that, that goes to show that Daniel was a man of wisdom. He did it surpasses the magicians, the soothsayers, and, and all those people that were there. He was exceptional. When we do work ex exceptionally, we know this is my area of gift. 
needless nobody tell me. You don't wait for folks, folks to tell you stuff. You can listen to them, but you must have your conviction based on the evidence of your work. Folks will come and tell you, oh, you know you're an apostle because of one thing you did. Earlier today I was using an analogy of delivering mail to my neighbor. That will make me a, a, a mailman. I was just asked to do that and I, and I did it. But if you get a word from God to go and tell somebody something, you call yourself a prophet. Oh man, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, I tell you God is just good to me. Hallelujah! What happened? Well, God told me to tell some folks the other day that he's coming soon. Seriously? <laughs> That don't make you a prophet. You were just somebody that God chose to use to, to, to deliver a message. Probably that's the last time you ever get a message direct from God. That don't make you a prophet. A prophet, a, a, who, is, a prophet who has the gift of prophecy, or who, who has the gift as a prophet, will operate constantly, even when he doesn't want to do it. Like Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, man, I don't want to do this no more. I'm paraphrasing. And Jeremiah said, man, this thing felt like fire shut up in my bone. I, I, I can't keep quiet. So anytime you see that you can easily stop doing something that you like, or you think you like, you may not have that calling, man. I said easily. I'm not saying you won't feel like you want to stop. But when you have that, what do we want to call this thing? That drive, that push, that niche, that thing. Say, come on, man. You want to call this to, to be, be relaxing. Come on. Go back up there and do what God called you to do. Let me watch this to one home. Daniel 6 verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Church of God, if we can perform with excellence, if we can, uh, 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 let me give you these lists that I think that will help you to recognize your gift. So, one, the leading of the Spirit of the Lord. Two, opportunities. Three, ability. Four, passion. Five, inclination. Six, dawning. And seven, when you perform with Excellence. You can almost show if that's your gift. People call you to do certain things, ask you to do certain things, and in the manner in which you do it, you will know. All right, for the five-fold ministry office. Now you look at, at an, um, an apostle. I have the apostle in this category. I have them in five different offices. And this one now is operate from the seat of divine administrative guidance. Divine administrative guidance. Don't have the, enough time to go into detail with that, but probably next time. I hope, I'm not promising, but I hope. So his duties and function, he, he function in an administrative manner to guide the body, etc. For now, look at the prophet. He divinely instructed to speak to the people. He is, he is divinely instructed to speak to the people.